Hi my loves, thanks for returning. I hope this video finds you happy and doing well. As you know by the thumbnail, this video is going to be on how to live a soft life. So if you're interested, then just keep watching. All right, before I get started, I wanna get a little housekeeping out of the way to all of my returning subscribers. I love you and thank you for returning. If you're new here, I am Bridget. On this channel, I do skincare, makeup, sprinkled in with a little bit of lifestyle. So if that's your cup of tea, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'd love to have you join the family. Now that we have all of that out of the way, let's talk about how to live a soft life. That seems to be the trending topic of the hour and I've got my little thoughts on it. And I actually think that if we could um, learn to master improving a particular thing, we all can have a soft life. And let's start off by talking about what the Urban Dictionary says. And it says that a soft life is a life of ease without requiring hard work, sacrifice, and unpleasantness. It also says it's important to understand that this social movement is less about wealth and more about fair access to standardized good quality of living. Now on the flip side, I've seen definitions where people explain it as expensive. It's an expensive expensive lifestyle that requires no worry or stress. Now really, no worries or stress. Tell me who, rich or poor, and everybody in between, who can escape no worries and no stress? I'm a little surprised that was put in the same sentence together. In fact, I haven't even really seen a superstar or an actor or a singer or whatever that has a stress-free life. Case in point, uh, let's look at Will Smith and the dynamics of his relationship look at how stressful his life is and what he's one of the best actors in the world and going back to the hard work sacrifice and unpleasantness so if you have to work hard does that mean you can't have a soft life if you have to sacrifice does it mean you don't have a soft or unpleasantness i mean let's get real who escapes life uh, managing to avoid those three. Well, I guess if you're independently wealthy, you probably have some way or another uh, manage to avoid hard work. But sacrifice and unpleasantness, I think that probably everybody, no matter what our pockets look like, experiences that. But with all of that said, out of those two definitions, I really wanna talk about stress. And let's be real, let's look at our lives. Let's look at everything that causes causes a stress. So think about it for a moment. Think about if everything that caused you stress, it was gone, poof, gone. How would you feel about your life? How would you feel about your quality of life? And you know, during this video, I'm gonna use soft life and quality of life interchangeably, because if you have a good, if your quality of life is improved or better, I would think that you have a soft life, you know, to me, I mean, that's to bridge it. So just think about it for a moment. If those stressful things were removed, would your quality of life improve? Well, I know mine would. And the first thing that sticks out for me is my health. If my health was better, my quality of life would be better. If I didn't have to take all the medications that I have to take at night before bed, I mean, that that's a drag. So just think about that. But that's um, really what I wanna talk about in this video is stress and how it is, um, its effect on our quality of life. And I honestly feel as though if we can master, not, not really master it, but learn how to effectively manage it or not let it affect us in a negative way, that um, a soft life can be achieved. Now, um, some people may argue that it's not that simple, and I think that it is, because um, I haven't watched every video on how to achieve a soft life, but I have seen videos that talk about, okay, well, take yourself, if you're in a relationship and uh, the man is cheating on you, then leave him. Okay, well, we'd all, we would all agree that that's a stressful situation, right? Or if you are friends with a girl, if you, um, if you have a best friend or girlfriend and she's always negative, she's just toxic, get rid of her. Okay, well, that's a stressful situation. If we get rid of her, that, that would improve. Or 
let's say um, if you don't have high confidence, if you don't have a lot of uh, confidence in the way that you look at the world, you, you just kind of um, just uh, feel as though everything is against you or the uh, your environment is against you, just things like that. We would consider that stressful, right? So I think that I'm probably talking about uh, the same things everybody else is talking about, but I feel as though um, I'm just kind of honing in on one particular area and that is stress. Because in my opinion, um, the more stress that I can get rid of in Bridget's life, the softer my life can be. But let's be real, who can have a stress-free life? And you know, some may, and again, some may argue that, oh, you need money and you need that. Well, no, no you don't. Cause money, that's a relative term as far as how it makes a person feel. Some people feel that man, uh, money is the answer to everything. I don't feel that way. Is money good? Yeah. If you have money, you, you know for sure your bills are going to get paid. You know for sure you're going to have food and you know for sure you're going to have shelter if you have lots of money. But with all that aside, you know, I want to really talk about stress and I'm just going to touch a little bit on it. And, you know, I'm not really going to dive too deep into it because I guess this video could be super long, but I'm just going to talk about some areas that we could improve that would in turn improve um, our level of stress, whereby improving our quality of life, whereby giving us uh, the ability to live a soft life. But I want to start off with the easy stuff and that would be a poor diet. A poor diet wreaks havoc on our body and in turn causes stress and the stress can come out in a multitude of ways. You could get a headache Okay, if you have a poor diet, it could cause health concerns. If you have a poor diet, um, it, it just can cause a lot of things. Um, and a lot of those things could be long term. So a poor diet is something that if you have now, you probably do want to improve it. And you know, it's really sad because nowadays a Big Mac and French fries is cheaper than a salad. Okay, it's, it's cheaper to eat poorly as opposed to eat better. Having a healthy meal does us wonders, not to mention um, how it makes us look. You know, having a poor diet is something that can prematurely age us. And don't get me wrong, you know, I know that we're, we're all going to age, we're all going to die, we're not going to be here forever, but we do want to try to look as best as possible while we're here. And those are some things that a poor diet could do. So improving that, um, in my opinion is something that can decrease our level of stress. The next one I want to talk about is our sense of control. Now some people can navigate through life and be confident. They can take on the world. Everything just kind of seems to go their way um, in regards to the workforce or their outlook on the world. Whereas others just kind of make just kind of have a sense that the world is against them and that can be very stressful. And a way that you can improve your sense of control now. is having more confidence and you're like well Bridget well how can I have more confidence well you know I have heard uh, people say that your posture you know can help you I've also seen people say dress up you know make yourself look good if you're a woman uh, put on some makeup or wear a pretty outfit those are some things but uh, some of the, some other things are self-affirmation um, talk positively about yourself to yourself and to others don't do any type of negative talk also accept criticism learn that um, criticism is a part of life it's acceptable and just understand that um, it's it's not a bad thing it's really something that's going to make you better another way to have confidence is actually recount or think about uh, days and times when you actually were able to show confidence and see if you can repeat those things so the next one up is knowledge and preparation and um, you know a lot of times there are stressful situations that we have to go through however those stressful situations uh, don't have to be as stressful if we are knowledgeable about them and prepared. And what do I mean by that? 
Um, I'll use myself as an example. Once a month, um, I take my medication I, uh, via IV. Okay, it takes about two hours to get uh, this medication. Now, I can remember the first day uh, that I had to get um, this medication. I, you know, sit in a chair, have to um, get an IV just to take the medicine. I was really stressed. I was crying. Um, I asked my husband to go with me, and it was a really hard time for me. It still is, okay, but it's not as hard. And the reason that it's not as hard is that it's because I've actually done more research on this medication, uh, talk more in depth about this medication with my doctor. So what am I saying? The stressful events that you have to go through in life, attempt to be knowledgeable on those situations and be prepared. By being knowledgeable and prepared, it can help you cope better whereby reducing our level of stress. So the next one is your ability to control your emotions. So if you're one that quickly gets upset about whatever, or you're very emotional and you start crying, you know, the list goes on and on. Those are things that can be very stressful. If you use techniques that can help you better control your emotions or anger, that of course is going to reduce your stress. So they have so many things out there that you can do to control your emotions, uh, to uh, help you control your anger. I'm just going to quickly touch on three and they're simple. These are simple. Um, the first one is yoga. If you do yoga, that's another one that can relax you. It can help you with your feelings of anger. It can help you with your emotions. Um, you can also meditate. Um, that's another one that can can help you if you're at home. If you find yourself away like at work or with your friends or something like that, you can do something as simple as breathing, um, breathing techniques. So if you don't want to stop and breathe right there in front of them while you're upset and angry, go step to the restroom and, you know, just ask to be excused or go to the restroom and do your breathing techniques, you know, calm yourself down and then uh, come back. You know, that's something that you can research. There's so many other steps steps out there that you can study and use to control your emotions um because let's be real i in the past i have been like so um like emotionally upset where i felt like i was going to have a heart attack i really did it was just it was crazy and it's like now that particular situation i i know about it i know that it's going to come again and I found myself um, being better able to prepare for it and how to deal with it and manage it. So instead of being so stressed out to the point of where I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack, I have uh, prepared for that. I use techniques for those types of situations. And just a bit of a FYI, the breathing techniques, if those are practiced uh, consistently and daily, they can help you to stay calm, just naturally stay calm. So that's something to consider. So the last one that I want to talk about is your social network support. So, and that simply consists of friends and family. If you have a group of people that you know that you can go to when uh, life is difficult or something is really bothering you that can help us better manage our stress. Uh, so many times if I'm upset about something, I'll either talk to my husband or my mom or my friend, you know, the list goes on my sisters. It just makes things a little bit easier when you have somebody that you can vent to. Sometimes, you know, getting that stress released um, onto a good friend or or a family member can do wonders. Now, I'm not saying go and tell your business to whomever and however or whenever. Be selective, but to have a good, solid support system will make things bearable and not as stressful. So that's it. Those are the little steps that I feel um, you can incorporate, you can use to live a soft life or to improve your quality of life. Let me know what steps or techniques you use to um, obtain a soft life. I'd love to hear about it. Thank you so much for tuning in and until my next video, smooches.